Hello, good morning everybody. Today is November the 19th of 2020 and I'm coming to share with you a dream I had um, last night or, or actually early this morning before I woke up. It was right before I woke up. Um, it was the planets again. Um, okay, my husband and I were on the, you know, we were on earth. We were looking up in the sky and all of a sudden we could see Saturn plain as day. We could see Saturn was in the sky. And I said, Tony, come here. You got to come here now. You got to come here now. Come here. Look. Just look. And so I showed him Saturn up in the air. And then um, we could see Jupiter. And they were plain as day in the sky. You could, you could see them plain as day in the sky. Saturn and Jupiter. And then we were on... I don't know how to explain this, okay? Because I don't know what I was on. All I know is I was in a place of safety. And we were looking down on the earth. I was in some kind of a safety something. Because like I said, I, I couldn't see what I was in. I just knew I was inside this thing and it was a place of safety. I was safe. And uh, me and my husband and um, my children... Which was really weird because my children were children. I mean, my children are grown men, but they were children. In this dream, they were children. And then I and I said to them, I said, come here. And, and whatever we were in, it had some windows where we could look out. And we were above the earth. That's why I'm showing, that's why I'm showing you like this, because I'm trying to get you to see what I was seeing. Um, we were above the earth, and we could look out this window. And see, and I knew that something really bad was about to happen to the earth. And all of this, like I said, okay, so at first, I'm sorry if, I, if I'm just kind of like not, I don't know, I just woke up. So I, I wanted to just tell this so I don't forget anything. So how it happened first is I'm on the earth. We see these, my husband and I see the, the planets. And then, um, you know, we see Jupiter and we see Saturn just as plain as day. And then all of a sudden... Uh, were all on this safety thing. I, like I said, I still don't know what to call it. And then my children, who are grown men, were small children. And I told them, I said, you need to come sit down over here. Sit down over here and let's pray. We have to pray because something really bad is about to happen to the earth. Really bad. Something horrible is going to happen to the earth now. And, um, or on the earth. It was, you know, something really bad is going to happen on the earth. That's what I said. Not to the earth, but on the earth. Something really bad is going to happen on the earth now. It's going to be really bad. Let's pray. Let's sit here. Let's let's bow our knees. Let's pray. And um, when we did that, there was this planet. What I, you know, it's like we always call it the red planet. It was like this big, huge red planet. But it was more like a rust color, you know, like the color of rust. It was like that color, okay? And it became prominent um, in my vision, and it was by the earth, okay? Now, like I said, we were about, you know, we were like this far away from the earth, and we could see that uh, something really bad was going to happen on the earth, and we had to pray. We were going to pray for everybody that was down on the earth. Okay, so that's all there was to the dream. Now, Listen, I don't know. I don't have a revelation about what all this is. Um, I do not feel that the dream is symbolic because we know those planets are out there. And as a matter of fact, Saturn and Jupiter are close together. And in the sky, when I was seeing it with my husband, they were um, in close proximity to one another. So... I, you know, I don't know. Um, is this, is that red planet? I mean, what is that? Is that the Nebiru? Is that the, I, I don't know. So many people have said stuff and, and I'm not going by what anybody says. I'm just going to tell you straight up. I don't know. All I know is that evil, something bad, something really, really, really bad is going to happen in this world. Okay. And me and my family, we were taken to safety. We were off the world and we were taken to safety and we were getting on our knees to pray 
for the people that were that were on the earth, that were left on the earth. We were taking the safety and we were praying for those that were left there. Okay. I'm telling you now, um, please, if you know, there was oh, another part of a dream, the dream, uh, that there was a man, I was trying to tell people about being saved and stuff. And it's not about, and he says, Oh, well, I'm a Baptist. And I said, well, I'm not a Baptist. I'm not a anything. I'm not going to claim any denomination. I said, what I am is a Christian. I'm a Christian. And he started telling me, well, you know, that he was saved and everything. I said, well, a lot of people say they're saved, but they're living sin. And another man started trying to interrupt me, trying to say, well, you don't believe in once saved, always saved, do you? But I didn't let him finish. I'm like, yeah, a lot of people, they, they claim that they have salvation, but a lot of people watch pornography. A lot of people masturbate. A lot of people do all kinds of sin. They live in sin. And that's all there was to that part of the dream. Um, so I'm here to tell you today, if you are playing any games with God, you will not win. Do you understand what I'm telling you? There's no, you cannot play a game with God because see, God doesn't play games. So you're playing the game by yourself. You and the devil are, are playing a game. All right. Cause God does not partake in that. And all I know is to tell you this is that I have it in my spirit. It just, something really bad is going to happen on the earth. It was going to be something really horrific, a really horrific time or thing is going to happen to this earth or in the earth, in the earth. So that means the people of that were on the earth are going to have to suffer through whatever it is. And it's going to be really, really bad. Um, I'm just begging you today to put your life straight with Jesus Christ. Do not walk a lifestyle of intentional sin. Turn from it today. If you have been backslidden, I beg you, I beg you. Backsliding is one foot in the earth, one foot in the world and one foot with God. But see, it doesn't work that way. You cannot be taken to safety if you live a life like that. You must submit your life to Jesus Christ. You must take your hands off the steering wheel and allow him to steer you to heaven because only he can take you there. You understand? You don't know the directions to get there. You don't know how to get there. It's Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ was our perfect example on how we are to live our life. And once you accept Jesus Christ, you can get the Holy Spirit and he can help you. He is your comforter and he is your teacher and he will convict your spirit when you're doing something wrong or if you're walking off the path. It's very important to have the Holy Spirit. We can't, we can't go by things the way we think and by our own thoughts. We can't get ourselves there. I'm just telling you and I'm begging you today. Oh my God. I just wish there was a magic word. I wish there was just something I could say that would just click in everyone's brain to be like, oh, I get it. I get it now. I understand. I must totally submit. I must not do this. I must not do that. You know, because those things are very, you have to have a submitted lifestyle completely to God, the father, his son, Jesus Christ, and allow the Holy spirit to direct your every footprint, every one of your paths, every one of your steps. Okay. Um, I love you all. And Something horrific is coming upon this earth. Something really horrific. And it has to do something with this red, rusty looking planet. I've seen it so many times. And so God has graciously given us another warning. And I beg you, I, pr I promise, I just beg you so much that you just turn to Jesus Christ today. Please. Don't come telling me, I mean, well, I'm not saying don't come telling me because I'll pray for anybody, right? But don't think that it's okay. Well, I'm still, you know, I'm still doing this and, you know, it's just hard for me to stop this sin and it's just hard for me to do this. It's hard for me to do that, but I'm still doing it. I'm still doing it. Listen, you have a choice to make. You have a choice to make it. I'm telling you something, your choice, it better be God and not the world. All right. Don't think it's that, you know, like you're watching pornography and you're going to call it an addiction. 
or you're masturbating and you call it an addiction. I'm just using those two things because those are the two things I mentioned in the dream. But believe me, there's far more than that. So don't think that you're going to call it, oh, I'm addicted to that. I, I, I'm just, I struggle with that. You know, I'm addicted to it. I can't help myself. I can't help myself. I, but God understands. God loves me. He, he understands. No, he does not. He understood to the point where he gave you his son, Jesus Christ. Okay. Now it's up to you to make a choice every day. And if you're addicted to it, then why, when you're standing in the line, as my friend said, he got a revelation about this, a good way to explain it. If you're standing in the grocery store line, why aren't you looking at a pornography book in the grocery store line? Or why are you not masturbating while you're standing there in the line or going in a restaurant and doing stuff like that? Because you can control yourself because you know that's, that's, you know, people will see you. You can control yourself. Okay. And addiction is something you have no control over. Okay. So if you say that you're addicted to those kinds of things and to other sins, if you're saying you're addicted, what it is, is you're not addicted what it is, is you're choosing that over God. You're choosing that over the blood of Jesus Christ. And you're choosing that over the Holy Spirit directing your path and allowing, allowing to yourself to be convicted of your sin. You're copping out. You're copping out and you're saying, oh, God understands. When in reality, his understanding was giving you Jesus Christ. And, and allowing you to turn from your sin, accept his son, what he did, the sacrifice that Jesus Christ did for you on the cross, and that you turn from the sin and you do no more. If you stumble, if you're trying as best you can, and some one day you stumble and you fail, you better stand right back up again. Ask God to forgive you and get right back on that path. I'm not ta- I, I'm ta- I'm talking about stumbling right there. I'm not talking about a lifestyle of intentional sin, okay? There's a huge difference. Anyway, I love you all, and God loves us. That's why he's given us a warning. Um, I really thought that his time of warning people through me was over, but I can see it is not. But um, I just beg you all to please get right with Jesus Christ today. Goodbye.